Um, so thanks for joining today um, for this weekly webinar, which is all about how to create effective content for your food enterprise and social media. So I'm going to be going into a little bit more about the, the concepts behind creating effective content for your audience. So I'm not going to be going into things like posting schedules and strategies, but simply just how to create the posts which your audience will love and help them to connect more with your food enterprise and take them on that journey of you know, becoming more and more loyal to your food enterprise and to continue to, to shop with you, as well as to kind of develop that relationship with your customers through the content that you're posting so that, yeah, so that you can create these great relationships which are mutually beneficial to everybody. So here's a little bit about what to expect. I want to say I'm going to be covering quite a lot in the session today, so I don't want anyone to kind of stress out trying to, cut, you know, trying to follow all of the things. So even if as I'm talking, even if just one or two things uh, stick with you and help you to create content, then that's a really good result. So just have kind of trust in um, as you're kind of listening along that you'll receive uh, information that that's going to that's going to help you. And you might not receive all the information at once. Um, I'm going to be showing the slides after the session so you can always review them and they'll be recording too. So if there are any bits that um, you might have missed first time through, you'll be able to kind of go back in and look at it. And also this, um, this session will work really well with some of the other classes that I've done before about posting strategies and things like that. Um, so here's a general overview of the things we're going to be covering. So I'm going to start off with talking about how you can use your content to create a sense of belonging with your customers, which will then help to improve customer loyalty with your food enterprise, which is a great thing to be able to do with your content on social media. And then also why it's important to send to your customer in, in what, and also how you can do that in your content. Talk a little bit about the three E's and how you can use them to give value in your content. Um, some style tips and so I've got like a fly in here that keeps trying to land on my nose. So if I look like I'm swatting, I kind of am. Um, and I'm going to talk about storytelling with some reasons of why you should or can try to use storytelling in your content posting, but then also why storytelling is so effective as well as some tips of how you can, how you can implement it in a really simple way. Um, a bit about the concept that you might have heard of, it's a bit of a kind of cheesy marketing catchphrase of no love and trust, or I think the original is no like and trust. Talk a bit about why that's important and also that's where I've got this really lovely um, kind of list of different prompts which fit into these different boxes around no love and trust that will help you to post content, that will help you to actually get results with the content that you're posting. Then I'm going to talk a little about, a bit about Facebook and Instagram insights and how you can use that to measure and improve what you're doing with your content. And then we'll have a bit of time at the end for Q&A. So it's 22 now. I expect we'll be finished. I'll finish the slides by about 10 past, quarter past, and then we'll have a Q&A. But that's quite a hefty amount of me talking. So if at any point um, you have any questions as I'm going, please feel free to ask them. Um, that's totally fine. Uh, for some reason this time I can't see the chat so it would just be great if you could unmute yourself and let me know but if you don't want to interrupt me as I'm going also please put your questions or any comments or thoughts into the chat and that'll be the first thing that I get to um, once I've finished introducing the slides to you. So um, to start if you've been on a session with me you'll definitely have seen this before and I want to say the reason why I've kind of put this diagram in here is that it's really important with your content or with your posts or anything that you're writing that is communicating to your customers to always have in the back of your mind is how can you help your customers feel like they belong? Um, how can you help them feel like a sense of connection and almost even like intimacy or relationship with your food enterprise? So this is, this is important because love and belonging is like a really fundamental need that most humans have. So if you're creating a sense of belonging through your content, you're essentially help, you're, you're fulfilling this requirement that all of your customers will have of feeling like they belong to something. And also it's really effective if, you know, particularly for food enterprises being part of the better food movement to help your customers feel like they belong to something bigger and to feel part of this positive cause of 
creating better food systems for, for which are better for everybody. Um, and also like a, a big part of helping your customers feel like they belong is to really help your customers feel good when they interact with your business. So this is in your content, have a look at what you're normally posting or what you're normally saying. You can also spread, it doesn't have to be just be with your social posting. This can also be with your shop front or with your email marketing. Look at how you're writing things and think about areas where you might be causing any confusion or frustration. So make sure that your writing is super clear um, and keep your tone as positive and friendly as you can. Um, and also an important thing is to help your customers feel like they're understood because the market at the moment is that most customers are hyper-empowered, as in they've got lots of choice of where they can shop. And this is kind of part of one of the issues that we see is most you know, customers can just go to a supermarket and have everything that they want under one roof. Um, and so in order to kind of compete with that, it's important to help your customers feel like they're understood and to foster this sense of, of belonging and also being part of this kind of wider wider mission. This is something that we can do that perhaps the supermarkets can and also to kind of create this more personal relationship with our customers through helping them feel like they're understood and that they you know, have, a, have a relationship with your food enterprise. And you can do that in your content through, particularly through keeping your tone positive and friendly and also some of the points that I'm gonna cover through this uh, session. And what, one of the reasons why you'd want to do this and it is that, you know, and also why you want to put effort into what you're posting and think about the content that you're putting out and put effort into it is that when customers see that you're posting content that has effort put in and thought put in and is covering these points of like being kind of positive and fostering a sense of belonging, they feel like you care about them. It's they, you know, if you're kind of posting regularly on social media, it's like you're showing up for your customers and they know that you're showing up for them. So they feel kind of cared for. So it helps to increase customer loyalty and trust in the long run. Also, as you're posting, you've got more opportunity to generate this trust because you're showing more of your food enterprise, you're showing more of yourself, which gives your customers more opportunity to, to, to understand you, to see you and to connect with you, which then increases customer loyalty. Um, and this will help generate positive emotions uh, with your customers and helps to foster good customer relationships. And also, you know, through your social media content, if you're following some of the points that we talk about today, it's helping to take your customers on this journey from perhaps just being a follower of what you do on Facebook through to being a customer and then through being a customer, the more and more that they engage with you and create and have this kind of relationship with you online, it can take them through on this journey to becoming an advocate for what they do. Because if they feel like they're part of this, part of a shared mission or vision or goals through this sense of belonging to, um, then they're more likely to advocate for what you're doing, which means they're more likely to talk to their friends and family about you, more likely to spread the word, um, which just helps to kind of, yeah, it helps to get your food enterprise seen and, and known about by more people and also trusted in the community as well. So one of the ways that you can also create this sense that in your customers that you understand them, which is really key in being trusted by your customers is to be almost like the guide. It's like centering your customers in what you're doing or what you're speaking about. So rather than kind of talking about your food enterprise as in like I or we, or like always talking about your food enterprise as being like the center of the story, think about ways that you can, yeah, center your customer. And this could be more like thinking about your content from the point of view of what would your customers care about? What are they interested in? So it's maybe putting into your content more about what are the benefits of shopping with you in your food enterprise? What what and thinking from your customer's point of view of what is important for them what do they care about and bringing these kind of bringing that into your content so it's rather than what do you care about is what your customers care about and really centering them in in what you're talking about and it could also be centering your customer's story and you could do that through sharing case studies of your customers it could be through sharing and that could be through sharing your customers testimonials and things like that um, and also it could be even sharing your customer's posts with their permission. So say if a customer posts um, or tags you in a post or posts about shopping with you, 
then a way of centering your customers would be to share their post. Another way to center your customers really simply is to, is to profusely like thank them every now and then do like a, a beautiful thank you post, like thanking your customers for their support. And that's a way of kind of putting your customers as being like essentially the hero of the story. Um, so, and so this is something that I use as a kind of a quick check before I post anything. And that's just thinking about the post from the point of view of, is it giving value? And the three E's, so questioning is the post educational, emotional, or entertaining, is a really simple way of checking that what you're putting on your social media is offering value to your audience. So before you post a post, does it cover one of these points? Is it educational, i.e. this could be something like your recipe post, or it could be, you know, I mean, it could also be if you're talking, um, going back to the point before about bringing your customers into the wider mission of more sustainable food systems or local food and why that's important to your community or why that's beneficial to community. You could then talk about this in an educational post of, you know, for example, if you want to talk about the benefits of local food, you could talk about how you're keeping more, um, more value in the community, the pounds that people spent are being spent in the community, which is keeping that money local as opposed to being filtered off into the ether that is like the supermarket system. So it's therefore creating a more vibrant and more supported and healthy community. So it could, you know, so you could be on either scale, simple recipes to talking about some of the kind of wider issues and giving informational content around that. Um, it could also be emotional and this could be, for example, like cute posts that have like animal photos or things like that. So it could be provoking this emotion of like, like kind of like empathy or cuteness. Um, it could also be posts around sharing your story, um, particularly if you've had as an enterprise, like a, like an interesting non-linear story, or perhaps thinking of like the hero's journey, if you've been through a point of tension as an enterprise, not knowing if you're going to make it or not, that would make quite like a strong emotional story to share with your, your followers that will help them to make this emotional connection with you. This is actually thinking, does this post provoke an emotion? Obviously bonus points if it's a positive emotion. Um, and is the post entertaining? So that could be, does it have points of humor or, um, that um, humor is really subjective, so not everyone has the same sense of humor. So use this one with caution, but um, you'll gradually, as you're posting, know what works for your audience. You can gradually get like a sense of your audience's um, taste when it comes to humor. And these are just three points like what is the post offering to your customers? And if it helps them to feel an emotional response, if it helps them to feel entertained or to have like a moment of like, um, like laughter or in their day, that's a really positive thing that you're bringing to your audience, which also then kind of goes back to what we we're talking about um, with helping to create like positive emotions or pos positive feeling with your audience when they interact with your enterprise. And here are a couple of examples. So of posts which cover the three E's and I seem to have picked ones that are entertaining today. Um, so this is one from Ulster Country Market, um, which is a really, I think, quite smart way of nudging people to remember the order cycle. Um, so you've got these like cute eggs that have been humanized with little like speech bubbles. And so it's like a kind of a comment, like a slightly funny and entertaining way to deliver that kind of don't forget to make your order message, which is, I think, really smart. Um, and this is also a recent post by Kent Food Hub's Folkstone, which I really love. It's like injecting pun, puns into their content. Um, food puns are always brilliant. Um, so we can't remain calm, it's no any time. And this, for example, this is also like how you can think about what's entertaining as being, it's, it's like subjective, right? So some people hate puns, some people love them, but you'll quite quickly get a sense of what your audience likes or not. Um, from the results that I've seen, puns always seem to work really well for some reason. So do, so do memes, for this, I think, for the same reason. I think with a lot of what's kind of going on in the macrocosm at the moment, injecting humor seems to be particularly effective uh, in your social media. And a nice thing to do for people who might have been scrolling and seeing maybe not such like lighthearted content with all of the things that are going on for us all at the moment. 
And here are some simple style tips um, that are also, I, I look at this almost like as a checklist when you're writing a post. Writing online is a lot more casual than if you're, say, writing um, a like a letter or write, you know, writing an essay. I don't know, or comparing social media to even writing an email. Like you can get away with a lot more casual style of writing on your social media. In fact, the more casual it is, the better. Kind of humanizes your content and helps people to feel a bit more of a kind of human connection with you. So as long as it, the, the closer it is to almost like speaking style, the better um, when it comes to social media content. Again, there's a caveat of this with, it depends on your audience, but from everything that I know about food enterprises content, I found that casual, um, almost conversational writing on social media brings the best effect for you. But this would be different, say, if you're an educational establishment. So it does depend on the type of enterprise that you have, but in our case, casual is better. Um, also make sure on social media that your first sentence of your post is the best sentence. Um, questions work really well here. You want to kind of almost be enticing the viewer to read more because often your caption on social media will be shortened when people see it in their newsfeed or on their phone and they'll have like an option to see more. So you want that first sentence to entice your customers to see more. Um, and here's a link, when I share the slides later, here's a link to a headline optimizer. So it's just something you can type in your first sentence and get like a gauge of how like attractive it is, almost as if it was a head, like were a headline. So obviously it's not a headline um, or a title, but it's, I found this quite effective for planning your first sentence of a post. And just, you can then get a gauge of how um, attractive it is. Um, prioritize readability and write for ease of understanding. This comes back to writing um, more casually and more conversationally. The most important thing is clarity. Can people understand what you're writing? Um, the clearer, the better. Um, readability and legibility is of utmost importance. Um, the online world is really busy and, you know, if it, it's quite easy to get fatigued if you're, yeah, like see long unbroken up captions online, it's almost like a deterrent because, you know, if you're online, you know what it's like if you're reading lots of things online and you're, you just feel tired of it. So it's wherever you can make it as simple as possible for your audience to read what you're, what you're posting and to engage with your content. Um, a really simple thing you can do is use bullet point lists. Um, if you can't use bullets um, on Facebook posts, for example, you could just use like a dash um, or you can use an emoji, like a bullet point. That's really nice and effective because it kind of breaks things up. It injects the post with color, which therefore helps like just keep it more kind of engaging and makes it a little bit easier on the eye um, and try and keep your paragraph short. If in doubt, split your paragraphs up. Um, I'm a big fan of almost single paragraph sentences with social posting. So again, it's just anything that makes that, like the engagement as easy as possible with your, with your audience. Keep me out of time. Um, also use transition words. So transition words are words that just help bring your audience or the reader through what you're writing. So don't be afraid of starting a sentence with and. Um, it's not great, for example, in essay writing, but again, going back to this point about keeping your writing casual online, Starting a sentence with an and just pulls the reader through what you've written. And it also makes it really easy to follow. You know, so it's like, um, there's a link here that gives you a big selection of different transition words you can use um, that are separated into types. This is like a really go good go-to document when you're writing social posts, because it can almost just help pull you through the process yourself of writing it by starting with these transition words. So it's things like, you know, like and or because or however it's, you know, things that stylistically, if you're thinking of like writing a novel might not be great, but on social media, um, this is great stuff because it just makes it easy for your customer or your reader, sorry, to understand and to follow and to read through what you're writing. So yeah, this is another thing, um, just to be clear and concise. I've put a little um, helper in here as a link, which is the Hemingway app. So you could actually just take your whole post, copy paste it in, you could write, or you could write it directly in this, um, or, or in this link here, this, this um, page, and it will help tell you how easy your post is to read. So it's just, just a few things to play with later.
Um, okay, so the next point I want to talk about here is if you, as much as you can, try and inject storytelling into your social media content. And that's because people are 22 times more likely to remember something if it's embedded within a story. We are set up to understand things more clearly if it's if it, if it's if it's delivered through story as opposed to say just a statement or a fact. So here's this like quite simple framework that I use sometimes to think about how to turn something into a story because it can seem quite abstract. It's like oh yeah okay I'm going to tell a story, but how can you actually do that when it comes to writing your post? And it always helps to start with a human. So wherever you can try and humanize your content. So say if you're introducing um, a supplier, it's like, you know, if you want to tell a story about your hub of, you know, rather than saying like, we, um, you know, we offer the freshest produce, how can you turn that into a story? You could introduce a supplier, you could start with a supplier story of how um, they work really hard to make sure their produce is as fresh as possible. And all you could do it from the point of view from your customer. So it's wherever you can try and start with like a human at the center of your story. And that could also be the humans behind your food enterprise as well. You know, what is their goal or desire? For example, to bring the freshest produce to your customers. And what's the obstacle? That could be quite a clear one. For example, like maybe it's a challenge that they had um, like in their production. And how did they overcome that obstacle? And the final message here is something you want to kind of wrap up with what do you, what's the main thing that you want your customer to walk away with? So say, for example, just with this like really simple um, idea of freshness, the message you want your customer to walk away with is that your produce is like the produce that you sell through your food enterprise is super fresh and amazing. Um, so this is just like a really simple way of looking at it. Stories don't have to be like a really long post. How in like just a few tiny, like four sentences, could you use this framework to, um, yeah, to kind of almost storify what you're writing. And okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the concept of a no love and trust. So it's most people buy from businesses that they know and that they like or love and that they trust. So these are kind of three core kind of principles to think about with your content of how are you helping your customer to know who you are, either know who you are individually if you're kind of like a one person enterprise or how to know who you are as a food enterprise, like what's the personality behind your food enterprise? Who's the, who are the people behind um, your food enterprise's name? Um, how to help your, your audience to love or like you? And also how to help them trust you. I think, sorry, I've just got someone in the waiting room, I think. Okay. Okay, cool. And trust, how to help your customers trust you. There's lots of different ways you can do this, but trust is, is vital if you, for example, want to improve customer loyalty and to keep your customers in the long run. If they trust your food enterprise, they're more likely to come back again and again in the future. And content, and your content on social media is one way that you can help to fulfill these three points that will help your audience to perhaps just go from knowing about you on social media or having come across your profile on social media to actually buying from you and to continue to buy from you. So here's some ideas. So I've, bro I've, I've broken this up with some prompts of different things that you can do that cover these three points or help you to build these three points with your audience. And there's a couple of different types of posts that you can do to help you with this. So I'm gonna start off with some ideas of posts that you can write that are personal. And this will help you to kind of tick that box of no, and also trust because if they see the kind of the, like the people behind your food enterprise or if again, the, like the more kind of get more of a sense of who you are as people, then that will help them to trust you and also to know you. And, you know, because you're all amazing, obviously like you as well at the same time. So thank, big, like writing thank you posts to your customers and, customers and supporters is a really good thing to do here because it gives this sense of who you are and what you're about. By saying thank you, it helps your customers feel appreciated and also to feel more of a personal connection with you. So I'd recommend doing like thank you posts. And this could be as like a general thank you. Thank you so much for supporting us. This has been an amazing month for us. Like talk about some of your some of the good things that have happened for you that month. 
and really express gratitude for the support that you get from your customers or supporters. Um, also, and you can do a personal post where you really show what you love, like really share your enthusiasm for what you do. And this is something that maybe you could do if it's just you, you could talk about that quite personally and just get quite used to kind of writing from your own point of view. But it's also, if you've got a team, this could be something where you could back this back to your team as a question, like what do you love about the food, our food enterprise? What do you love doing? What's, what makes you feel really enthusiastic about what we're doing? And just create almost like little sound, sound bites, which you could actually share as like a, a video or you could share it just as like a typed quote and then quote it from the team member's name. And it's just starting to kind of like create this kind of personal personality behind your, your enterprise. Um, grow and team member hello is always really great. And they always get really good. Um, they always get like a really good response. You could also share your overall story if you haven't yet, like how did you set up your food enterprise? How did you set up your, your growing operation? Like what's your story? Then this kind of could be something you could do with that story time framework. Did you, were there any obstacles and how did you overcome them? How could you then turn that into a point of inspiration for your customers? Um, and also like for personal store, for personal posts, it could be what is front of mind for you and your enterprise right now. So for example, this could be something when the hungry gap um, in April, March, April was a thing, maybe that was quite a big, big thing for your food enterprise. So it's like anything that's really aligned for you or which is perhaps something which is affecting the food enterprise could be something you could talk about from a personal point of view. Um, and that could also then link into covering more of these different points. It's not just personal, it's also educational, for example. But if you're making it personal, it's like, how has that perhaps made things more challenging for you and how are you overcoming that? And so it's more kind of talking from your point of view. So here are some ideas for educational posts. I think for me, I always find that these are the most simple posts to do. Um, and I don't, I'd be interested to hear if, if you're writing educational posts and if you're feeling the same thing or if you found the same thing. Um, this could be, you could pick maybe a produce of the day and week or month. And so this could be a thing you do monthly or weekly or even daily if you're really hardcore posting. Um, and you could post a, a nice close up picture of the produce, someone holding it, injecting humans in pictures is always a good idea. It doesn't always have to be a face. It could be hands. Hands are really effective in photos on social media. Um, particularly holding produce has this effect of helping your customers feel like, oh, I'm holding the produce. It's like pulling the customer into the picture. Um, and how to prepare it with simple recipes, or even just how to prepare it. Some people, for example, if you're doing a veg box scheme, some people might have never prepared a celeriac fruit before, for example, and look at it and just be like, what do I do with this like gnarly looking vegetable? So you could um, help them out and do a kind of how to prepare it post. Um, never assume everyone knows um, how to how to do these things. It's it's all and also if you've got kind of new customers or people that might not have bought a veg box before and been confronted with vegetables they've never prepared before, it's like a really nice accessibility thing too. It's like opening it up to different audiences. Um, and you could do behind the scenes on delivery day, packing boxes, etc. So this is more like behind the scenes um, videos or content or explanations. It's like helping your customers to understand how things work. This is like doubly beneficial because you can almost, um, by educating your audience on how things work in your food enterprise, you could also then use these posts to almost like handle objections in advance. So if you have a reoccurring problem that you, that's like may, might be a point of frustration for your customers you can use an educational post to explain why that happens um, and also even better if you can then tie that into a benefit for the customer so an example might be hmm, like if you have to replace things in a veg box um, you could then explain why this happens and how this happens and then the benefit to the customer is perhaps that it keeps the prices lower for them um, or the benefit for them is that they get you know, access to unique and varied um, produce or they get the most fresh produce. So you know, think about what, how, you know, so it's like handling that objection through this educational post whilst also making this um, a benefit for the customer. And also if you, if 
you could also use educational posts as a way to talk about issues that you want to align your food enterprise with. So it could be wider systemic issues within the food system or food production. And this is a way of helping your customers to um, know what you're about, but also you can then also use these posts to educate customers on some of these wider issues that we're all facing. This is something to think about as well when you share posts. So if you're sharing, if you don't like talking about issues directly from your point of view as an enterprise, you could share a post from um, an organization you want to support. For example, the Nine Workers Alliance um, share a post that talks about an issue and just do a small caption that um, maybe talks about your main learnings from that post. And it's that would then count as an educational post. And it's like then giving back this offering something to your customers, offering value because they're learning something new potentially, then it's also like offering value to organizations that you um, want to support as a food enterprise while also affiliating yourself and your values with those organizations. So. And so here's some ideas of inspirational posts. I just wanna kind of recap the different types of posts I'm talking about here. So there's like personal posts, there is educational posts, not to be confused with the three E's, um, personal posts, educational posts, and now ins inspirational posts. And this could be posts where you're doing like beautiful nature close-ups, and this could be close-ups of produce, like really gorgeous looking food. It could be um, photos from your suppliers um, set up, so their land where the food is grown or produced. Um, also, here you could do inspirational customer stories like how they've benefited from shopping with you if this you might not have this yeah you might not have anything now but then when you see something like this from a customer it'll probably oh this is actually quite inspirational and that would then count as an inspirational post I'm trying to think what that might be it might be i mean also it could be like volunteer stories as well here, that would be quite inspirational as well to your customers of how volunteers have gotten involved and all of your um, amazing um, stories throughout the you know, COVID experience could also fall into this category of inspirational stories, like how your food enterprise um, stepped up to the challenge of these you know, really challenging experience we've all been through um, over the last year. Um, you could share what motivates you and your team. So this could be something that, again, you could bat it back to the team just as a question, like what really motivates you to do the work we do and then see what lovely stuff comes back and then use that in your social media. Because um, if it inspires your team, then it's probably gonna inspire your customers as well. And that kind of is like motivation is kind of contagious. Um, share what you stand for and what you care about. This is a little link to talking about the wider issues that we saw in the educational posts. And then also you could share your core values, vision and mission as a food enterprise, like what really drives you, what, what do you stand for, what do you care about? And this then could help your customers to feel, oh, we have shared values and shared a shared vision, which feeds all the way back to the sense of belonging um, that we were talking about first of all. And you could do this through sharing your core values. I put a link here for this core values exercise, which is quite useful to do. It's just a nice thing to do as a team. We'll sit down and, and make some notes on yourself and then see where that takes you um, if you haven't done that already. And the final type of post I want to talk about here is promotional posts. So these are really important because these are essentially your action posts. So if you followed my other sessions, I talk a lot about um, posting strategies and your ask post. So your promotional posts will fall into the ask post category. So in promotional posts, you want to have really strong and clear call to actions. So what is it you want? So these are the posts where you're actually asking your customer to do a thing um, that benefits your food enterprise. Like go to your shop front and place an order before the order cycle closes or join your mailing list. It's always good with these to, again, wherever you can just put a little, you know, remind the customer of the benefit for them. Um, so for example, joining the mailing list, the benefit would be don't miss out on an order again. Um, it could it could be like to so think about what the benefit is to them um obviously you know put your order in before order cycle closing what are the amazing benefits for, for shopping with you it's just something to think about to add into these posts and another idea for a promotional post is like really promoting um your food enterprise and why you're so great and sometimes these posts can be 
the hardest or the easiest to write depending on um dep yeah depending on the person i find these quite i find these impossible to do for myself but i find them really easy to do for businesses that i work with um i, I don't know if you can relate uh so this could also be writing case studies and customer testimonials um feature your most satisfied loyal customers as their best advocates and um stats show that even like 88 percent of people who have seen a review or a testimonial on, online will then make a purchasing decision based on that um testimonial which is an amazing statistic if you if you think about it and also everyone knows that if a kind of a friend or family member uh, says something positive about business, you're much more likely to trust that business and perhaps shop with them. So uh, customer testimonials are really, a, yeah, a really good thing to start putting into your general social media content feed. If you don't have any, you could always start asking for them, what customers do you have a good relationship with them? Uh, what customers do you have a good relationship with? Ask them to write a testimonial for you, or if someone sends a positive message to you or an email, just reply and it said it's got something really lovely in that you could use reply and say you know and ask them I, I thank you so much for your lovely email do you mind if i use this paragraph in our social media to promote our food enterprise most of your customers will be happy to help um it could also be even if in person someone says something really positive to you about what you're doing you could ask them do you mind if i quote you in a social media post um thank you so much for the positive feedback it really means a lot to us do you mind if i use what you've just said on our social media um so it's just getting into the habit of collecting these and then using them okay so the last thing i want to talk about i uh, just need the time but just enough time to do this to give us good chunk of Q&A at the end, which is great. So measure, it's important to measure and improve what you're doing. And you can do this by using social media insights. And the reason you want to do this is because you want to find out what your audience loves so that you can do more of it. Because you know, we can kind of overcomplicate what we're doing online, but essentially what you're trying to do is find out what your audience really loves about what you're doing on social media and just try and do more of that thing and less of the thing that they don't love so much. Um, and you can kind of track this using social media insights. So I'm just going to introduce you here to Facebook insights. I wanted to introduce you to Instagram insights too today, but I'd have to hook up my mobile and log into Zoom with that, which I don't think I've got time for. Um, but I'll be doing another Instagram lunchtime workshop and I'll make sure I've got my phone connected for that one so I can actually show you how to do that on your phone. So. First of all, if you go to your pages insights, I'm actually going to go back to the page here so I can show you how to find that and just go completely back to basics. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry that my internet's so slow when I'm on Zoom. Okay. Mm. Okay. So on your Facebook page, you will have a list here on your page and one of the options will be insights. And if you click on it, you'll come to this page, which is your page insights page. And also, I will, I'll, I'll share a link as well, how to find your insights for your page or a quick how to in the event profile. Because I know sometimes some of us that use Facebook quite a lot, you think it's quite intuitive, but sometimes if you don't use Facebook that much, it's, yeah, it's, it's not so intuitive and it's hard to find anything. So this would be your overview page. And you can see here just a general overview of how your page is doing. I'm not going to go into this today. I might do a separate session on exactly how to read and understand your insights. But the bit that I'm interested in today um, and that I want to talk to you about is this, which is looking at your posts. So you can find it here by scrolling down on your overview and clicking see all posts, and that will take you to your post page. Or you can find it in this menu on your left. So you want to scroll down and you go to posts. And if you click on that, then you will see an overview of all of the posts that you've posted recently and how they've done. So the first thing on the top of the page will be this, which shows you what time um, to post or what time works for you. Just want to say here that this is in Pacific time zone. So don't get confused if you think suddenly everyone is offline between six and nine. Um, that's actually nighttime um, for us uh, in, in the UK. So that just remember that this is Pacific time zone. So don't get confused with that. Um, then here's a list of all the posts you've published. So you can have a look here at what posts have performed well in the past for you. 
And then you can start to optimize what you're posting based on what your audience have reacted to in the past. Um, you can also see a breakdown of what types of posts have done well. So you can look here at post types. If you click on that, you'll see what types of posts have done well. And by post types, it means you know, links, images, videos, shared videos. And you can see here for this particular account, which is Upcycle Mushrooms, photos have done really well. Um, and here is more where you'll get more of the detail. So with each of the posts, you can see here, the reach that you see here in light orange is organic reach. So that means how many people have seen this post. So this is something that um, connects with the algorithm on Facebook, which I've talked about in another session. Have to talk about it more in the Q&A, but I'm not gonna linger on how the algorithm affects reach, but we can talk about it in the Q&A if you want to. And then this bit is engagement. So the stats that I'd be looking at are, how did the post do here? How much reach did it get? Um, so you can see here, this post got a lot of organic reach. So I'd be questioning what was so great about this post start to make notes, you can just start to like have a notepad when you write what posts are doing well, what themes are doing well, what topics are doing well, and then look at that next time you start to write your content. And I'd also look at engagement. Is the engagement high? So here you've got likes and comments, so you can see are people interacting with the post. Um, usually you'll find if your post has had more reach, it will have more engagement, so it's quite easy to just look at these two together and find out what posts are effective. But it's also, if you wanna go into more detail, you can also find what posts am I getting the most engagement with? Did I ask a question in this post and did that impact my engagement? And it's just a way that you can start to use insights to improve what you're doing on social media and see what posts your customers have loved. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna do a session purely on insights where I'll go into more detail. Um, but I think that's it for now. And I want to go into some Q&A time. Cool. So I feel like I've kind of rattled through lots of lots of things. Um, does anyone have any questions?